Welcome to Style Lessons. My name is Dr. Burkett. Today I will discuss the grammar of motivation and illustrate how to introduce and frame research essays that motivate readers and writers. As in real estate, where the rule is location, 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 so in writing the rule is problems, problems, problems. For human motivation has a problem-solution structure or grammar about it. Readers are motivated when writers identify a problem, especially a new problem, and propose a significant solution, all in the introduction. Composing the introduction right helps readers see everything that follows as clear, coherent, and significant. Not only the quality of the problem, but how one introduces the problem and solution is what taps into motivation. Effective writing is built around problems, including the research essay, which is an important problem-solution genre. This lesson focuses on composing the elements of the research essay as an example for how to create global motivation. Skillful writers build a general frame centered on a problem. First, write a prelude, whether it's a meaningful quotation, a startling fact, illustrative anecdote, or significant question like the research question. Second, provide relevant background information to introduce the topic. The shared context in research writing includes a report about the state of the scholarly conversation focused on the problem. This report is called a literature review or review of the critical literature. Third, introduce the problem as something not well known. Problems have two parts, the condition and the cost, that is the cause and the human effect. In research writing, the problem's two parts come as two questions. First, the local research question, usually focused on a specific work of literature, and second, the larger research problem, which may take several forms, but often it is an interpretive issue or a debated issue that one must traverse to answer the research question sufficiently and significantly. Writers usually style the problem as a question, for a problem is a big significant question or debated issue that target readers care about. Fourth, the solution, also called the thesis statement or main claim, proposes an answer to the problem. In the research essay, the thesis answers two questions, the local research question and the larger research problem. So the two-part thesis statement asserts a local interpretation and a larger solution or position, thus answering the research question and research problem. This general framework outlines the grammar of motives for all sorts of writing and communication. Next, I offer a more specific framework, typical of the academic research essay. For setting up the research essay, I find that a six-part framework is more specific, typical, and expected. Moreover, I use traditional terms like research question, research problem, literature review, and thesis statement. This six-part framework sets up the research essay for clarity, coherence, and motivating significance. Three elements have flexible placement, the local research question, the larger research problem, and the literature review, as one finds them in academic journal articles and essays. Three elements have relatively fixed placement, the prelude, thesis statement, and advanced organizer, which is simply a brief list of reasons a writer has for believing and recommending the thesis. The reasons become the basis for topic sentences in the core argument. These six elements should introduce and frame the research essay. This framework is like a key to a map, and like all maps, it must be adjusted to suit the subject matter and situation. This specific frame is the grammar of the research essay and is well worth memorizing. I require it in my writing classes, and I look for it whenever I read research essays, scholarly books, and academic articles. This framework is also a grammar of motives. It focuses and motivates readers and writers. What is the research problem? It is simply a big significant question that generates debate and motivates writing among experts and scholars. It is a question that target readers care about. Therefore, writers frame research essays to address not just a local question, but also a larger, more significant problem. The research problem is usually more general, theoretically significant, and consequential, having wider implications or applications. In the introduction, writers show how their local research question about a topic involves or helps address, even in a very small way, a related research problem. It is the problem that motivates readers. 
In the conclusion, writers elaborate further how their thesis has wider significance in that it involves or addresses a problem that target readers care about. In other words, to answer the local research question, a researcher must navigate through and address the larger research problem. What is a literature review? A literature review is a survey of prior research called the scholarly conversation on a problem, issue, or debate. A literature review maps the terrain of the scholarly conversation on any one research problem, identifying the differing positions or types of viewpoints. The literature review establishes the shared context of what researchers have already said, so that the writer can qualify or correct this shared understanding. The literature review is a powerful step of research, shows the writer's understanding, and requires focused reading of secondary sources. Well, what kind of literature? Well, researchers review what's called the critical literature, composing the scholarly conversation as found in scholarly articles, scholarly books, and specialized encyclopedias. So it's a review of the critical or scholarly literature. Well, what kind of review? Researchers write up a brief report typically categorized and summarized of the current state of any one scholarly conversation or debate on an issue. This review is categorized as a report of the differing viewpoints, opposing positions, or where the experts disagree, so that the review maps out the terrain of the scholarly conversation in a clear and helpful way. For instance, if you are reading print literature, you should be able to categorize the critical literature in different stacks across your desk or floor, accordingly based on each source's thesis or main claim, so that you see the scholar's differing positions on the question at issue. The review is a summarized report that identifies and summarizes accurately the differing solutions to the research problem, naming not all scholars, but representative scholars, that is, major critics and well-known commentators. The review can also summarize and explain the differing types of solutions, perhaps according to historical era, scholarly tradition, ethical viewpoint, literary theory or hermeneutic or assumptions, and so forth, all in a way that helps the reader and writer understand the state of the debate. A researcher works through six steps to write the literature review. First, one must identify the research problem involved in the topic, and I learn about the problem either in a class or by reading reliable introductions to the topic. Second, one needs to visit the library to search the critical literature and secondary sources that are recent, relevant, and reliable. One should identify the major voices and landmark works on the topic. Other research writers have written literature reviews in their journal articles, so introductions are the place to start. Third, one needs to record references to practice ethical scholarship. Fourth, one reads others' research and arguments, evaluating them by quality, viewpoints, and types of argument. Fifth, one synthesizes the arguments by appropriate category, such as viewpoint and position on the issue. Sixth, one writes the report in a brief literature review of differing viewpoints on the problem naming one or two proponents of each viewpoint to make it specific. The literature review is a powerful step in research writing, for once you survey the prior research, you will be able to enter that scholarly conversation and assert your thesis and voice. Styling the thesis as a solution is part of the craft of composing introductions that helps and motivates readers. As we've seen, the literature review provides the shared context and backdrop against which a writer asserts his or her thesis statement. After a brief literature review, research writers usually start their thesis with a contrastive conjunction, like but, instead, nevertheless, or however, then assert the thesis statement and add a brief advance organizer of supporting reasons. Often formed like this, some think that viewpoint one, and others believe that viewpoint two, and so forth. However, a careful analysis of the work shows that, and I write my thesis statement, based on three reasons, and I'd write, write it my advance organizer. According to our style book, no opening move is more common amongst experienced writers. Open with a seeming truth, then qualify it or even reject it. 
The writer says, in effect, you may think you know the whole story, but you don't. And the contrastive conjunction, but, uh, signals the start of your thesis and your voice. By means of the thesis, a writer gains voice, and one's voice is the sweet chocolate, an assertion in good writing. Let's illustrate. I will not read my sample introductory paragraph, but I want to know, can you identify the six-part framework? Can you find the six expected elements? I've marked in crimson the key term starting most of the expected elements. First, where is my prelude? Yes, the prelude is the first six lines, including the hook of sorts, and information to introduce my topic. Second, where is my research question? I style it as a question, so it ends with a question mark. Where is my research problem? Yes, I call it the larger issue and write it immediately after my research question. Fourth, where is my literature review? Yes, I write it right after the research problem because the literature review simply summarizes the expert's viewpoints on the problem or issue. Here I write the barest summary, but I, I include in endnotes the scholar's names and statements representing each position or viewpoint. Fifth, where is my thesis statement? Well, I start my thesis with the contrastive adverb, however, which signals it. I write the thesis at the end of my introduction, where readers expect to find it. And sixth, where is my advanced organizer? I summarize my supporting reasons right after my thesis statement in a noun clause starting with specifically. The advanced organizer maps out my core argument and topic sentences. Every research writer should know these six elements and apply them as key moves. Moreover, readers expect and need these key elements to understand the problem, appreciate your solution, and feel motivated to want to read about it. Where does one find voice? Voice derives from the writer's understanding and confidence in his or her thesis as a valid and valuable solution and contribution to the conversation. After surveying the scholarly conversation, writers can assert their thesis and voice in four ways. First, you might agree with a current viewpoint and take a position in the conversation. By doing so, you situate your thesis in the conversation, but you do not change or advance it. When researchers recognize a conversation in need of change, when the current positions or assumptions seem inadequate, then they reread the primary sources and read the critical literature for creative agreement and disagreement in order to challenge commonplaces, go beyond the commentaries, and advance the conversation in small or large ways. To advance a conversation, one should ask three questions. Can you extend a thesis in new ways, such as applying a thesis more broadly or to a related work? Next, can you modify the conversation, such as pointing out an invalid argument, distinction, or assumption, or even deepening an understanding for an accepted position by offering new evidence or a new perspective, or seek to support an unsupported assumption warranting the position? Finally, can you correct the conversation, such as challenge a commonplace viewpoint and offer a new understanding on the topic? In these four ways, writers find their voice and enter into the problem-solution structure of motivation. When writers compose the introduction right, clarifying the problem, the current solutions, and their own solution, then readers see everything that follows as clear, coherent, and significant. This is how writers create global motivation. See you at our next style lesson on the topic of global coherence.